Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 29th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Mercedes has revealed a preview of their first series production vehicle on the AMG.EA platform designated for their all-electric performance models. The AMG GTXX concept is powered by three axial flux motors from Yaza Motors, which Mercedes acquired in 2021, as previously reported here on The Current. The tri-motor setup delivers 1,341 horsepower and is based on an 800-volt architecture paired with over 3,000 NCMA battery cells with an energy density of 300 watt-hours per kilogram. The concept introduces a groundbreaking charging system, which is capable of 850 kilowatts at 1,000 amps. This allows the GTXX to add 248 miles of range in just five minutes. A new direct cooling system keeps the battery at optimal temperatures, ensuring consistent full power output during intense driving or after fast charging. Notably, this announcement includes a collaboration with European charging equipment manufacturer Alpatronic for the development of a prototype charging dispenser, which can handle these speeds through a standard CCS connector and cable. The plan is to deploy these across Mercedes-Benz's charging network. The concept achieves an impressive 0.198 coefficient of drag, thanks in part to a body style with open airflow, an active air brake, and 21-inch wheels with active louvers that channel cooling air to enhance brake performance, inspired by the AMG One. This would be the most aerodynamic German production EV we've seen, though the American Lucid Air and Chinese Xiaomi SU7 are slightly more slippery. The interior includes bright orange accents, drawing inspiration from high voltage cabling while leaning into lightweight design elements that include carbon fiber seats with the rear seats integrated into the roof. The production version of this vehicle is expected to hit the market next year. No indication on a price range has yet been provided by Mercedes. What price do you expect? On this program, we generally stick to covering EV news, which is likely to affect EV adoption in the US and North America. Occasionally, a breakthrough takes place, which could be disruptive on a global scale or is otherwise indicative of an external trend, which could affect electrification where we live. This week, the $200 billion Chinese technology conglomerate, Xiaomi, revealed their latest EV. It is already in production, and we think it could significantly alter global perception of the value proposition of going electric. Has there ever been such a thing as an affordable luxury EV? The Xiaomi YU7 is a four-door SUV built on Xiaomi's 800-volt silicon carbide high-voltage architecture with a standard rear-wheel drive model outputting 315 horsepower and up to 681 horsepower in the max all-wheel drive variant, which accelerates from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 3.23 seconds. The YU7 is offered in three trims, standard, Pro and Max, with a starting price of $35,350, ranging up to about $46,000, which undercuts the Tesla Model Y's base price of $36,751. We think this comparison is important because the Tesla Model Y is currently the best-selling electric vehicle in China, the US, Europe, and the world. The YU7 comes equipped with a 96.3 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery in the standard and pro trims, offering up to 518 miles on the notably optimistic CLTC testing cycle. The MAX trim uses a 101.7 kilowatt hour NMC battery with a 472 mile range. A general rule of thumb is that CLTC range figures are usually around 30 to 40% higher than EPA estimates. Its 5.2C fast charging capability allows a 10 to 80% charge in 12 minutes, adding up to 385 miles of CLTC range in 15 minutes. Measuring about eight inches longer than the Model Y, the YU7 features a fastback design with a front trunk and rear cargo space with comparable storage. 
YU7 further differentiates itself with the inclusion of a LiDAR sensor suite for driver assistance and a 16.1 inch infotainment screen powered by Xiaomi's Hyper OS that is paired with a projection bar spanning the width of the vehicle and AI assistant. Fixed physical buttons and knobs add tactile operation as well as wireless magnetic dials which can be placed in various locations throughout the vehicle for tactile control. Apple and Xiaomi are close competitors, each controlling nearly 15% of the Chinese smartphone market, but the YU7 does support the Apple ecosystem with CarPlay and music controls. This decision helps Xiaomi integrate more directly into the digital lives of about 150 million of China's 500 million registered drivers. Additional luxury features include standard dual laminated glass throughout, an adaptive suspension system, Napa Leather Zero Gravity Massaging Seats, a 25-speaker Dolby Atmos certified sound system, and an optional 4.6-liter center console refrigerator, which can also be set for warming, and a smart dimming electrochromic panoramic roof. Within three minutes of opening their order books, Xiaomi hit over 200,000 orders for their YU7 and nearly 300,000 in one hour. I would have ordered one myself if they were available here. With its advanced technology, competitive pricing, and strong market reception, the Xiaomi YU7 is well positioned to capture some of the Model Y's market share in China and anywhere else the two vehicles compete. Xiaomi expects to begin deliveries of the YU7 within the next month. Tesla's Shanghai factory is the brand's top producing automotive facility with 480,309 Model Y sold in China in 2024. From January to May of this year, Tesla reported sales of 126,643 Model Ys in China. Though Tesla sales are down about 30% year over year, including the global factory shutdown for the new Model Y tooling, the model maintains a commanding lead among all electric competitors. In April of 2024, Xiaomi began delivering their first EV, the SU7 sedan, upon which the YU7 is based. The brand delivered 162,384 SU7s between April 2024 and January of 2025, a feat which stunned us enough to report about it here on The Current. With no automotive experience, the brand surpassed Tesla's 152,748 Model 3 sales in the same period, according to the China Passenger Car Association. Today, Xiaomi only sells cars in China. While they're production limited for now, they've stated official intent to export starting in 2027. The heat is currently on and we'll see which brands step up and which step aside. What automakers do you think will come out on top by 2030? To some extent, new entrants do split the market, but the great ones also expand it. This week, Tesla continued to make progress on several frontiers. First, the company kicked off their RoboTaxi pilot program in Austin, Texas. Dozens of factory standard Model Ys equipped with a closed version of the company's full self-driving software operated within a geofenced area of 10 square miles. So far, during the first six days of operation, there have been no collisions, injuries, or ticketed traffic infractions. Initial invitations to use the new service were sent to a familiar group of long-standing Tesla advocates and owners with a strong presence on the X platform. They were granted special access to a dedicated Apple-only app, which allowed them to hail a car with a human supervisor in the passenger seat. Each influencer was permitted one guest and unlimited access to the fleet for 18 hours daily for a flat fare of $4.20. Most published demonstrations have been uneventful, except two examples of uncomfortable braking and one which briefly veered into an oncoming lane before correcting. Riders cited pickup and drop off locations as an opportunity for improvement, as is often the case with human drivers. I'll include links to a few atypical ride footage examples in the description below. As with Waymo and Zook's autonomous taxi services, a team of remote operators was on standby in case a robo-taxi was unable to resolve a problem on its own. We have not seen evidence that the failsafe has yet been utilized. This week, Tesla also celebrated the first fully autonomous delivery of a Model Y from its Gigafactory in Austin, Texas to a customer's home about 11 miles away. 
On the X platform, Tesla shared a 30 minute start to finish video of the vehicle navigating city streets and highways, reaching speeds of 72 miles per hour without any human in the vehicle and no remote operators active. I'll include a link to that video in the caption as well. The company also revealed that they're on the verge of completing its first lithium iron phosphate or LFP cell manufacturing facility in Sparks, Nevada, adjacent to its existing factory. The new facility equipped with machinery from Chinese battery giant CATL will focus on producing LFP cells for Tesla's Megapack energy storage system. The plant is designed for an initial output of 10 gigawatt hours annually. Speaking of LFP plants, Ford has resumed construction on its $3 billion Blue Oval Battery Park in Marshall, Michigan, which was designated to produce LFP batteries for their upcoming affordable EVs. Ford temporarily halted construction in 2023 because of backlash from their plan to license the technology from China's CATL and in response to aggressive negotiation for minimum United Auto Workers Union worker allocation demands during key UAW negotiations. Ford has since reaffirmed its commitment to the location with battery cell production equipment arriving at the facility this summer. The 2 million square foot facility is on track to begin production in 2026. Cell production equipment is currently producing C sample cells offsite. The company says, quote, this facility represents a historic step. An American automotive company is manufacturing without relying on a foreign joint venture LFP battery cells and battery packs domestically with American workers for American assembled next generation electric vehicles. To be clear, Ford is still licensing the battery chemistry design and manufacturing process from a Chinese battery supplier. Ford executives, including vice president of technology platform programs and EV systems, Lisa Drake, emphasized the plant's role in boosting U.S. competitiveness in EV production and creating local jobs. The plant is expected to employ 1,700 workers and produce up to 20 gigawatt hours annually. At wealth management fund Bernstein's 41st annual strategic decisions conference last month, Lisa Drake reportedly told guests that Ford's new EV platform will support up to eight body styles, including trucks, crossovers, and possibly sedans. Bernstein's lead auto analyst shared that Lisa told him Ford intends to match the cost structure of leading Chinese players, not only when it comes to battery pricing, but for the full system cost from chassis and thermal systems to inverters and electronics. Of course, policy has a great deal of impact on those costs. The final form of the so-called Big Beautiful Bill will likely impact incentives for battery manufacturing credits considering foreign entities of concern listed in the IRA's qualifications. Can Ford's next-generation EVs compete with the value and performance offered by the Xiaomi SU7 and YU7? Well, those are our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so that we can continue producing this program. You're definitely going to want to subscribe so you don't miss a very special electric motorhome review coming soon, along with some other exclusive e-mobility reveals. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.